All right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, today we are announcing an important collaboration between the City of Lawrence, the Lawrence Police Department, the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence Township, and Body Worn by Utility, Inc., to deliver Utility's latest innovation, active shooter response technology, to the Lawrence Township schools. Active shooter technology is passive, non-intrusive gunshot detection system and location, I'm sorry, let me back up on that, is a passive, non-intrusive gunshot detection and location system that immediately alerts police officers, school administrators, and other designated persons if a gunshot is detected and its precise location. Lawrence Township Schools is the first, the first in the country to receive this system. I think it's important to note also that this collaboration is being proactive. It's a proactive one instead of being reactive or responsive to an event that has already occurred. So joining us today to announce this collaboration are Dr. Sean Smith, Superintendent of the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence Township, City of Lawrence Mayor Steve Collier, Mr. Ted Davis, the Chief Executive Officer of Body Worn by Utility, Inc., all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, and David Hoffman, Chief of Lawrence Police. So the way we'll do this is each presenter will make their remarks, followed by a group question and answer session after their individual remarks. And we'll start with Dr. Sean Smith, Superintendent of the Metropolitan School District of Florence Township. Dr. Smith. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And, and certainly to the members that are at this podium, uh, I want to thank uh, the mayor and the chief and this wonderful company for bringing something that will protect uh, the 16,000 students that we have in our school corporation. Often people will say, what keeps you up at night, Superintendent? Okay. No sound? Okay. Oh, it is. Is what keeps the superintendent up some time, and that is assuring that our children are safe and secure 24 hours a day. And so it is certainly an honor to be a part of something that is going to be innovative and certainly protect our children and our community at the highest level. So we are just honored to be at the table and be a part of our city and uh, this innovative technology that's going to support our community. So I'm, I'm certainly honored, and I'm going to step aside and with the mayor, who is certainly leading this, to say a few words. Yeah, very few words. I got to go back uh, a little over three years when uh, we were first uh, presented with a Body One Utility Camera uh, as, as an option. And I think that, uh, quite honestly, when we first sat down, that was a time when other cities were moving away from body cameras. And so when we sat down with Mark Wood, was our presenter at the time, about what Body Warren could do for us, uh, we were impressed to say the least. And, what, and the biggest thing was the uh, cost savings uh, in terms of compared to other body cameras. So Lawrence got on board quickly. It took us about 15 seconds to make the decision uh, to, to bring uh, the cameras into uh, the city. And it has created an, an overall, certainly a cost savings in terms of uh, bringing down incidents between officers uh, and uh, people who are involved in crime. So from that standpoint alone, uh, I was sold on Body Worn. About a month ago, I got introduced to, to this new technology that is absolutely fascinating. And it will, it will certainly put our schools on the very cutting edge uh, of, uh, of the technology and making our schools safety. I come from, a, from an education career. So for me, this is very important. The partnership between Lawrence Township Schools and the City of Lawrence has never been stronger. And to be able to get, bring this technology to the schools uh, is incredibly meaningful to me, and certainly be able to continue that, that partnership in, in, the, uh, in the future. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to talk about the technical part of it, because I can tell you a little bit, just enough to get me in trouble. But I'm going to hand this over now to, I believe, to uh, Chief Hoffman, I believe, is next here. We're going to Ted next. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm happy to be here today, and this uh, truly is a public-private partnership. Uh, uh, we have had an outstanding relationship with the mayor. Uh, mayor, mayor Collier has, uh, has always been a big proponent of the company, and uh, it, it wouldn't be that way if the, if the products didn't work. I mean, they, they, it's a testament to uh, the capabilities of our solution, and we have worked very well uh, with the, uh, the police department as well, and we, we're really looking for an opportunity to bring this technology first to a community where we had a great working relationship. Gunshot detection has been problematic for about 27 years. The technology has been uh, uh, 
lots of false positives. You, you can't have a system, regardless of the cost of it, if there are false positives, it's, it's worthless. And ShotSpotter and other technologies that are solving a problem of figuring out where a shooting is occurring in a city is not the problem we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve the problem of a shooting in a school and providing a response time that isn't 18 minutes, it's, it's within two or three or four minutes. And if we can have a guarantee that, that the system is 100% accurate and we have the closest resources responding in the quickest time, lives are gonna be saved. We're gonna knock about 90% of the cost of putting a system like this into a school. And it's very easy to see how this system would be installed and how it could be shipped to a school. And it doesn't take a lot of uh, effort to put it in. In the end, this is it. This gets installed in the hallways, in the classrooms. And uh, the difficulty of installing it is uh, really quite simple. You simply take the screw out of a plug, you pull off the faceplate, you plug this device in, you put a security screw so it can't be removed, and it's up and running. The benefit of this is that it's part of an ecosystem. It's a communications platform that we know where all the officers are in real time. We know where their vehicles are. We have the systems and the communication that's in those, in those vehicles. So we can figure out who the closest officer is. We will be able to tell that officer that shots have been fired in the school, what room that it's closest to, give him updates of information as to where the shooter is moving, and provide him with information about the gun type that's being used. It's a 223. It's an AK-47. He'll be properly equipped with the right uh, type of armor to go in and engage, and he can get there in a matter of minutes rather than 10 to 18 minutes. So that's the promise of the solution, and we're happy that we have an organization uh, that, that we can work with that has uh, been proven to work well with us, and a school system that uh, is forward thinking and is going to help us get the best practices in place so that the system is well used and, and, and we can actually move it throughout the rest of the country. Thank you so much for working with us. So I'll talk about from the law enforcement perspective just a little bit, the operational um, uh, benefits of this system. This is a revolutionary cutting edge deployment in addition to the system that we already have in place in the city of Lawrence, our body worn system, um, that we hope we will never have to use. Our collaborative goal is to prevent a critical incident, a school shooting, to make that not happen because we're target hardening our most vulnerable populations in our schools. Um, when an incident does occur, however, we must be prepared. And our goal at that time is to reduce and to minimize the devastation, the damage to our students and staff members and their families and really our entire community. So operationally, let me go through a couple points that I find uh, very um, appealing about this technology. Number one, probably most important, is the instant notification of a school shooting to our 911 communication center and to all of our officers who are logged on into our system and on duty. Um, they will know the exact location of shots being fired in a school long before the school teacher can scramble for his or her phone to call 911 in a panicked, chaotic situation when really they should be looking after their kids and making decisions about evacuation, sheltering in place, all those things that, that we're now preparing to do in our schools. Um, this brings a tactical advantage to our officers who do respond. To me, that's huge. That is protecting, giving, enhancing officer safety to those officers who are bringing safety to our children. It gives them immediate direction, almost like a roadmap. When they're going into that school, they know where to go. Now, of course, they will be able to hear gunshots, but as they're walking in on their phones or on their laptop computers in their cars, they will have an image that shows where to go, where that last shot was heard. What we're hoping to do is bring an end to a deadly threat as soon as possible. That's our goal. Seconds count. 
as Mr. Davis ju uh, just mentioned. Um, and then after that, we can guide fire, EMS personnel, the medical personnel, who will most likely be standing by on the outside until the all clear is given, and then they can get in there to, to, the, uh, to the victims. Um, and again, as I said, it'll, it'll ass assist staff members, not just in a school where something is happening, but in neighboring schools who will also be notified to go down on lockdown procedures. Um, so from an investigative uh, position, from an investigative perspective, after those shots are fired, after the dust settles, after we're cleaning up uh, potential victims, this gives us, a, essentially it's a digital crime scene that can be uh, evaluated in real time. So when, and you can imagine, we saw it in Noblesville, all of the investigators, not just, not just Noblesville, but state police, FBI, uh, all those investigators that come in, they will have a blueprint of what happened in real time. And then, of course, that can be, that can be presented for prosecution. So this, this technology, much like the body-worn technology we implemented three years ago, is simply unheard of. And it's, uh, I'm, as you, if you can't tell, I'm excited about it. Um, it allows our teachers and staff to focus on the students, not calling 911. It allows our 911 operators to control a situation when, as you can imagine, their phones are going to be ringing off the hook, but they're going to be one step ahead because they're going to know the address, the room number, the officers who are responding, and um, you know it's just going to streamline our, um, our response to the most urgent, deadly, chaotic, and critical situation imaginable in our schools. So uh, I'll just close by saying uh, we can't just hope this never happens. Of course we do, but now we're preparing for when it will happen. And that's, that's what I will uh, close with. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, would maybe Mr. Davis would like to give maybe a brief overview of exactly how the system connects I don't know we quite caught all of that, how the system connects, how the ecosystem uh, works in unison together, perhaps. So one thing is that uh, we're sponsoring this for the school system. This is coming to Lawrence Township at no cost. And we intend to have this system up and active as long as Lawrence will have our systems in place with the police officers, having the body cameras, having our in-car systems so that they can be well informed of the situations as they unfold. There will be no cost to this city because this is the, the area where we're deploying it first and we want to get it right and we want to make sure that this becomes a place that everybody in the country can reflect on and say, here's how it was done, here's how it works and, uh, and a testament to this uh, public and, uh, and private uh, working together to solve a problem. Uh, we knew early on that if, if we put a system in that was complex, it was difficult to install, it wouldn't scale. Uh, my vision is that we can ship a box to every school in the country and they can install this in a day. And if it required an IT group to install it, or it required contractors and ladders and wiring and, and infrastructure changes, it would take weeks and months. And uh, to do a, a standard school, it would take between one hundred and fifty and two hundred thousand dollars, typically, to implement a system like this, we wanted to get it down in cost to where you could have uh, local communities uh, uh, sponsored by the car dealerships or sponsored by the local community to pay for it. Uh, we expect that the cost of a school will be about ten thousand dollars to do. So we're we're knocking more than ninety percent of the cost out of the market for this. It connects using a technology called LTEM. That is a, uh, uh, a technology that allows for this to transmit up to seven times the range of your cell phone. So it can be deep inside of a building. You don't have to worry about having a connection. We're paying for the connection on this as a group. So you can have 100,000 of these devices all on one plan. It's not like each device has an individual plan. Because they don't send much data, they're only sending data if there's gunshots, the cost of having it in a school is essentially nothing unless there's activity there. So other than health reports where we know that the system is up and running, the ongoing cost even for deploy de deployments that we would have elsewhere is going to be minimal. But having a system like this being able to report to us, they have GPS built in when they're plugged into an outlet, 
like the outlet on the wall over there, it would know it was in this school already. It would have a very good idea of the proximity of where it's installed. It would connect to the network. And then the hive of devices that would be associated with it within the school become a, a cohesive group reporting system so that that information is shared. We know exactly what room there's a gunshot. We have a heat map of where the shots are being fired from. And this device has the ability to communicate with all the rest of them in the building so that you can have a shot in this room and clear across campus, we can notify other rooms that there's been an incident in this room and they need to go to lockdown, lock your doors, flip the desks over, do whatever the chief and the others that do security, I'm not a security person, but whatever your protocol, and whatever you would wanna have happen, we will work through those details and that protocol will be run and sent to the other room so that they do the right thing and, and hopefully save lives you know, by, by implementing this in the right way. Uh, I'm sure that over the course of several months, we will work out the best practices and the best way to display this and the best way to have officers informed of what is going on, when and where, and how best to respond. Part of this is, you know, the, is the public group working with us so that we get it right. And once we have that right and it's proven, we have other agencies come in and, and see how it works, we will then deploy that across the country in a way that, uh, that, that is affordable for every school in the entire United States. That's, that's where we want to be. Yeah. All right, excellent. Anything to add to that to any of the panels before we open up to questions? All right, thank you to each of our presenters. We'll now open up the, the uh, floor for follow-up questions. When asking your question, if you would, please indicate who specifically your question is for or if it's for the entire group. Any, uh, any questions, Steve? Well, I think that's uh, very important. So as we firm this up, we will obviously work with the professionals here, with the professionals here to make sure that we have direct communication to our parents. I think parents are going to be very excited to know that this level of technology is out there. Uh, that could potentially uh, make our situation tremendously safe in, a, in an event that, w and we would hate to even think about something like this ever happening, but to know that we could have technology that could stop some of the things that may have happened in other places is something worthy of us digging deep into. Okay, we'll wait. Go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're deployed in about 250 agencies across the country, and this is the first that is going to have this technology, and we, and we expect that we will deploy it here in the first quarter. When it first goes in, it will be in a monitoring status only, meaning that we want to make sure that while we know that false positives are probably zero, we, we expect this to be 100% accurate, we, we also don't want to have a situation where this causes more harm than good. So we're going to put it in the schools. We're going to monitor it over a course of a month or so. We're going to conduct testing and after hours to make sure that it does respond appropriately to gunshots and that we're going to work out the kinks as far as, you know, who do we notify and when and to make sure that uh, the appropriate officers are notified in the proper sequence and that, that uh, it's not only going to be the officers that work for Chief Hoffman, it's going to be the school resource officers, it's going to be the administrative staff, it's going to be adjacent schools. So if you have schools within proximity of the school where there's an event going on, you know, while it hasn't happened in the past, it may happen that there is a concerted effort to attack more than one school at, at the same time. So those schools need to go in lockdown. So we're going to provide a means for this communications network to do it in an automated way that it, it, when we all sit around rationally and discuss how we would like it to unfold, it's much better to do that and then have that automation baked in so that when it is kind of chaotic that, you know, we're all working from the same playbook. It, 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 it largely had to do with the fact that you've got one of the best mayors in the country that's forward thinking and very progressive that, that works well with a, a, a private company like Utility. Uh, when we were early on, I don't, I don't know if you know utility or body worn, but we are, we are number two in the world right now with body cameras and in-car video systems that work in the cloud. 
number two in the world. We didn't start at number two. When they bought the system three or four years ago, most groups didn't know who we were. We didn't get to number two by sliding from number one. We have been uh, growing in the marketplace. Uh, we've been uh, expanding throughout the country. Uh, the, the name utility comes from the fact that we served an entirely different industry before we got into this. Our customers are Con Edison in New York, Dominion Power, Southern Company Resources uses our product, AGLR, for fleet management and for real-time uh, situational awareness of where their crews are. And this got brought into this uh, first responder sector after Hurricane Katrina, and we got into body cameras and in-car video systems about four or five years ago. So we've gone from a relative nobody to number two in the world in a very quick succession by working with partners like uh, Lawrence, a uh, very pro you know, progressive thinking mayor of what needs to happen. And we've got a police chief that's been a fantastic supporter. Obviously, they wouldn't be supporters if the technology didn't work. If we had issues with this or that the body cameras or in-car in video wasn't the best in the world, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And because of their belief and their support of us as a company, I wanted to reward the community that helped us get to the position we're in by providing you with a system that is obvious that every community in the United States needs. And we just came from IACP, which is you know an international thing in Chicago where there's 100 agencies that would love to put this in first. We chose to work with your, your group here because they have worked so well with us and we know that we're gonna get a very good assessment and we're gonna come back with a plan that's gonna work throughout the country. And I think I'd like to shine a spotlight on a community that, that has a very uh, 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 thought progressive leaders that are that are in the positions they are and and we choose to work with a group like that mm -hmm. we'll work through that uh, we obviously have safety plans and teachers and administrators work with their students on that all the time so uh, that would obviously be a part of our safety plans that we already have installed in the schools. Right. Uh, well, we, uh, we spent uh, two years and several million dollars not solving it. Uh, you know, the, the good news is that everybody else spent, spent 27 years uh, not solving the problem before we, we, we wasted two years. But we discovered about... Uh, six months ago that the uh, the thing that everybody missed was that they were using similar microphones and equipment and acoustic systems that you're using currently to record my voice to sample gunshots and then to go study that in a lab and try and figure out how do we detect that and they use various means artificial intelligence is a pretty common method that they try to do this but a gunshot only lasts about a tenth of a second and the thing that you don't know that's in there is about a hundredth of a second, there is an ultra-wide energy, broad-spectrum burst that's ultrasonic. And it goes from about 20,000 hertz to about 220,000 hertz. And that information, unless you have the right equipment, you don't even know it exists. The beautiful thing about that is that there's nothing in this room and nothing in a school that can make an ultra-wide energy ultrasonic burst other than a gun. So when you know that, then you know you've got a eureka moment. And then we started studying that, and we found that if we take that several hundredths of a second of information and we send it from a device like this to the cloud and we run our analytics against it, I can tell you what kind of gun it is. And because that ultrasonic energy decays with distance faster than the lower frequency data, I can tell you how far it is from the sensor. So a lot of engineering and a lot of thought went into this, but it is absolutely revolutionary. And it allows us to have a device that's inexpensive and could be deployed on a wall plug. So it doesn't get any easier than that. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, so in, in free space, you can go 100 meters, maybe a little bit further than that. But uh, in most enclosed spaces, you're not going to have 100 meters in a building. But from a practical standpoint, if you close the doors here, like we have, we're in an enclosed space, 
the signature is not going to make it out of this room. So you have to have it in every enclosed room that you want to protect. In a long hallway, you might want to have one two-thirds of the way down and one one-third of the way down, and it would do an entire you know, stretch. I expect that you'd need somewhere between 50 and 150 of these in a school, but the cost of this is it's not much more than what a surge suppressor would cost at Best Buy. So cost-wise, I don't, I don't think that it's going to be an issue with doing it. Yes, that is the plan. First quarter. First quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be after January. The uh, you know we need to make sure that we have all the UL listings and all the things that need to be done uh, prior to putting it in a wall socket in a school. But we're on track for that. Uh, you know, it'll it'll be first quarter, and I expect by the end of the first quarter we'll have very good results, and that uh, we could deploy it nationwide going uh, there forward. Yeah, it's definitely a pilot program because any time that but, uh, a pilot, uh, I would say it's going to be a full deployment in every single school in this, you know, Lawrence Township. So it's not just one school. We'll probably start with one school and make sure that uh, that we're having good results and that the, the, it's looking promising. And, and I expect, I'm 100% sure that's going to happen. We will then deploy it in every school. But like I said, to to do the actual installation, you know, it just requires a screwdriver and somebody willing to do it. So it takes about a day to do a school. If you're putting 150 sockets in, you know, we can ship them to the various schools. The, the, the one factor I want you to be very clear on, you asked about false positives. It has to be 100% accurate. We have to have zero false positives. That is, you know, a, a thing we have to prove, and I'm sure that we will. The second thing is, it should take no configuration. It should be easy. If it required tweaking and it required special, you know, analytics and understanding how the dynamics of a room would affect the system, it'll be a failure. So we've designed that out. By detecting this very unique signature, I'm not in the weeds trying to analyze data that's normally loud. This is not a loud noise detector. I don't care how soft the sound is, if it meets the criterion of being an ultrasonic energy burst across the wide spectrum, it's a gunshot. We will then send that to the cloud and do further analytics before we alert anybody, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to marry and match one of the fingerprints of a gun. So it's going to be perfect, and it's going to be easy to install. Those are the two things that are absolute requirements. So to answer, maybe answer part of your question is, is that I'll be talking with other mayors I already have. Uh, and so I can see this technology rolling out fairly rapidly throughout uh, certainly Marion County and the surrounding uh, counties because it is so readily available. It, it, it does tend to make um, uh, other parents feel safe. In some respects, this can almost be a deterrent. We said already, but we, we, hope, we hope it never happens. But we think having this in place, uh, and certainly a chief can speak to this too, but if people, if, if, if a bad actor is thinking about doing something like this, but he knows that our schools have the, this technology available and his chance of escape is zero, uh, it will probably, it, it will certainly make him think hopefully a hundred times about doing it, actually carrying it out. Yeah, the other, other aspect of that is that if everybody in the school, or let's make this a university campus even, if this is going off in the engineering building and all the other buildings go to lockdown and all of the rooms are within that facility go to lockdown, you make it very difficult for somebody who wants to be a bad actor to go in and have a, an, an event that's going to cause a lot of carnage. It is very difficult. When the doors are locked and you have a gun, it doesn't break open the door. So it's very important that we have excellent situational awareness and we train people to act accordingly with the technological tools that we put in place so that we make it the most difficult it can possibly be. So if you, if you shorten a response time to minutes and you make it very difficult for somebody to make progress in what they want to do, it's going to be a deterrent to even go in there. Because if you have one event that happens and the person was deterred almost immediately, 
that news is going to travel, and pretty soon these more hardened areas are going to be areas that are going to be avoided. And, and I, the area I want to have avoided is where my kids might be at school. Yeah. So built into the device is communication. So it has a speaker that is on every device. So it can communicate with every room. Now, uh, one of the capabilities is going to be that you can use this to send messages to quadrants in a building. So as the protocol goes on and as the situations change, the police department can actually make announcements in the school in certain rooms based upon how they see the scenario playing out. Okay. And they can also listen in, but only if shots are fired. They will never be able to listen into these devices unless there's something going on in the rooms. But it allows them and gives them a tool that they can actually be very aware of what's going on in the building by listening to certain rooms and hearing what is going on based on the fact that on that campus you have an active shooter event going on. So it is, uh, you know, from my military background, I was an Air Force pilot. I really want to bring in a common operating plan where everybody's working from the same map with the same information with the best possible data that you can have, including the, the school and the administration and the teachers. This is something that I'm not going to work out how best to play this out. I'm going to provide the technology and I'm going to work with my partners to implement it in a way that the data is consumable and you get the best possible outcome. And I'm going to count on Chief Hoffman to help me with that. Well, we've seen school shootings elsewhere in the country where officers, it was a chaotic, tense, uh, rapidly evolving situation, and officers simply didn't know where to go. This gives them at least an indication of where the last shot was fired. Now, that may be 45 seconds, it may be 90 seconds ago, but it gives them an idea of where to go. As you know, police officers run towards the threat in chaotic situations when everybody else is running away from the threat. And so to give them um, a little bit, as I used the word earlier, a roadmap on where to go, as you can imagine, that would be an incredible uh, tactical advantage. And I want to clarify something that Mr. Davis just mentioned. Yes, we will know very likely whether it's a nine millimeter or a 40 caliber or a rifle or a shotgun uh, that's being fired, but our officers are trained and I'm sure the school staff is trained in their procedures. It doesn't matter. Right? We're going in with our ballistic uh, vests on, with our highest powered weaponry that we have to confront that deadly threat. Now, it's nice to know those things, but at the end of the day, at the, you know, when we're going in, um, we're going in ready for the most severe weaponry that we could possibly face.